Hi everyone, Jeremy from thecustomgeek.com here and today I'm going to show you just a little programming jig um, that I made for a Nightmail 328P, uh, the TQFP package, the AU package. So um, I'm going to show you how I did this. But first I want to say a real quick uh, announcement that these guys are in the store now, these these little one square inch of goodness boards, uh, along with the FTDI adapters. I said I would do a post when they are ready and I forgot to, so they're ready. They're in there. They're available as kits, and uh, they're also available fully assembled, uh, which is like this. You get um, this guy here. It does not have headers soldered onto it. Um, it comes with some headers, so you can solder which what you like, or you can sew them into a project, or you can do whatever you like. So anyway, uh, those guys are for sale. The ones that come like this have an Arduino bootloader on them, uh, and as well as the ones, uh, the kits also have an Arduino bootloader on them. And so when you get the actual uh, kit it'll have this chip in it and it comes preloaded with an Arduino bootloader So how did I do that? Let's show you how um, Actually, let me, let me back up a little bit first. I made some kits uh, I assembled them. I said how am I going to get a bootloader on these because how I did it before is I soldered some headers on here I'm like well, I don't want to do that because I don't want to sell these things with headers already soldered on them I want to give you guys the opportunity to uh, To solder or not solder headers on these guys. So we have this guy right here. Well remember a while back I did a post this is a long time ago. Um, I use pogo pins for probes. I got them up here. And so I have, I made multimeter probes and I drilled out the ends of them and I put these little pogo pins in, which are really, really nice. Uh, they look like little tiny spears. So what I did is I made a little jig. I'm actually, I kind of did this out of order here. I made a little programming jig right here and um, I'll show you that in just a minute because I got this guy hooked up. So let's um, let's use, this is a USB tiny from, from Adafruit. I bought this programmer a long time ago. Um, I've done some horrible things to it, and it just didn't care. It just survives. It's, I would recommend that to anyone. So how I did this is I simply, um, if you look at the board here, it has all the pins broken out. Well, I just uh, soldered um, headers on uh, the MISO, the MOSI, SCK, uh, the reset line, and then ground in 5 volts. And then so those guys are broken out here, and then they're broken out into the ICSP header um, here, the 6-pin header coming off the tiny. And so what I did is I very simply took this chip. This is the kind of, obviously this is not going to work for mass production. Uh, I looked at TFQP sockets and I didn't want to pay for one. And uh, I wasn't quite sure that I want, I wanted one that was flexible so I can do like 100 pin TQFP packages. Um, as well as uh, the 32 pin packages as well as 44s and I, I couldn't really find one. So once I'm confident that's lined up there, this is the uh, just a little breadboard power switch also from Adafruit. So if I switch this guy on, you can see that it has power now. So now I can go and I can um, uh, I can upload a sketch through the header or burn a bootloader here, and then that'll go ahead and do that. You can see that red light on the background, and um, also too there's that LED that's that's, blink, that's showing the blink sketch. And so you can go ahead and throw different sketches in here, um, and that's just a great way to as well as burn a bootloader. And so you can do that without um, without soldering anything on there and it makes it makes for just a great way to do that uh, for a small number of kits. Now if you're doing mass production obviously you need something else. Uh, and that's, that's a different sketch on there and then when you're done before you move your finger turn this off and then go ahead and move your finger and then get rid of the square on the end of your finger. I learned not to press down too hard on these. I actually measured the distance with the feet um, so I'm not bending the pins and uh, I haven't bent any pins yet so I also yeah, don't be the jolly green giant when you press down in there. So that's this little programming jig. That's simply all I did. It's pretty, really simple. Um, so let me show you something else I made. Is um, this guy here, which is um, this board. Now this board, when you plug it in, um, oops, plug it in, right? Um, you can see a little LED on there. This is just a, a kind of the same thing. Only I took my assembled boards and I said, okay, yeah, this is going to sit on here. And so I just lined up, uh, again, the reset line, uh, the 5 volts, the ground, and then the headers there. And then you can put these on here. And then it will, um, you can see that it lights up like that. And there's also LEDs for all the um, all the lines. There's surface mount LEDs on all the data lines in the reset line. So it's just an easy way to, to bootload a chip as well as throw some software on there. And that's it. Any questions? Uh, go ahead and shoot me an email or uh, post them in the forums and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks much. Bye-bye.
Hey guys, just one special note about um, the Atmel 328 TQFP packages. They have two extra pins, Analog 6 and Analog 7. I broke them out on this board, so you have them here. But I want you to know that if you look at the data sheet, um, the rest of the analog pins are on port C. And port C is defined as you can have you can make it an input or an output. It has internal pull-ups and all that good fancy stuff. These two guys are in a class of their own. Um, in other words, they are strictly analog inputs. They cannot be outputs, and they do not have any kind of internal pull-up resistors. So uh, with that being said, you cannot stick LEDs on them as... Uh, so often we are tempted to do for more blinky, but they are they are only analog uh, read pins. So even if you want to put a switch on them, you have to do external pull-ups. Um, there's no internal pull-up for them. So uh, just to note when you're planning on projects for this guy and programming this guy, they're in the Arduino IDE, um, so th they'll work and everything, but they only work as analog inputs. Thanks.